Hello everyone, and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. Joanne Fabrics and Crafts was founded in 1943 in Cleveland, Ohio by Hilda and Berthold Reich, Justin and Alma Zimmerman, and Sigmund and Matilda Rohrbach. Their first store was just called The Fabric Shop, but the name of these stores were changed in 1963 to Joanne Fabrics, which was a combination of the first names of two of the children of the families that founded the company. Those children's names were Joan and Jacqueline Ann. Eventually, these stores expanded to carry things beyond fabrics, also carrying everything having to do with arts and crafts, so they started calling their stores Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. They currently have around 840 locations, but it's hard to get an exact number because as of January 2023, they've started closing stores, and it's been hard to find a list of all of the store closures that are planned. The reason that they're starting to close stores is because they've started suffering from declining sales, and also they have a balance sheet that investors are really not happy with, so they're trying to shore that up as well. As far as I know, the two locations that we'll be looking at in this video are not scheduled to close. However, it did kind of feel like a closing sale in here because everything was on sale. When I see sale signs like this all over a store, it makes it feel like the entire store is having a clearance sale, and then it seems like it's about two steps from going out of business. It's been probably over 20 years since I've been in one of these stores, and I was surprised to see that the pattern selection hasn't changed at all. I know there's still people that make their own clothes, but this stuff is labeled with brands like New Look and stuff, but it's not exactly the latest fashions. This looks like stuff that would be in a early 90s Sears or JCPenney catalog. I wonder how much of this stuff they actually sell now. It really does seem like every shelf has a sale sign on it. I had no idea Garden Gnomes buttons existed until I saw these. I also didn't know that Joanne had a brand deal with a well-known cosplayer named Yaya Han. There's various displays throughout the store with her branding, including this Ava Foam. Wait, Ava Foam? For a long time, I assumed that Joanne Fabrics was a store that just older women shopped at for like sewing and crafting supplies, but it turns out that a lot of people who are into cosplay do a lot of shopping here as well. Before I filmed this location, I had done some research and read, you know, some store reviews and seen pictures that customers had taken of stores that just looked like they were in really bad shape. Fixtures that were falling apart, things looked grimy and old, and I have to say, I didn't get that feeling from this location. Some of the fixtures seemed like they were getting a little on the old side, and using folding tables isn't a good look either in a store, but for the most part, like I said, it seemed clean and well organized. As we'll see though in the next location we look at here shortly that that kind of stuff isn't consistent across Joanne Fabrics and Crafts stores. I was surprised to see that they have a decent candy selection at the registers. They even have some Haribo stuff there. People often ask if I actually buy anything at the stores that I film and I did buy this. I needed a wreath holder and this one was on clearance so it was just a few dollars. Let's go ahead and head out of this store and we'll go take a look at our second location. Here's the second store we'll be taking a look at, and this one I thought would be in even better shape than the first store because the sign here looks like it's newer and in better shape. It's definitely less faded. This location seemed to have even more Christmas stuff left over. This was filmed during the first weekend of February, so I was kind of surprised to see all this here still. I wonder how much longer they'll try and move this stuff before they just give up on it. Even though the sign out front looked fairly new, the inside of this store didn't look like it had been updated since 1989. The floors are very worn out. A lot of the shelving has started to turn that yellowish color. Everything in here just seems dated. Even the lighting seemed to kind of throw off a yellowish hue that just made everything seem old and dingy. I'm pretty sure this is the kind of store that people were complaining about in those store reviews and in those pictures that I saw. This location really does put off old, worn-out Kmart vibes. That's what this location reminds me a lot of, is some of the old Kmarts that I visited that were just kind of falling apart right before almost all of them were closed. This store just looks so much more different than the first one that it's hard to believe that they're both part of the same chain. Those shelves in particular might be some of the most beat up that I've ever seen in a store. 
These poor shelves just have decades of grime and abuse on them. This store didn't seem to be as organized as the other location and also seemed to be much more cluttered. It's not quite as crammed in here as like a Dollar General, but it's getting pretty close. Looks like we've got some more Christmas stuff here, 80% off. I wouldn't be surprised if this store ended up on the closure list at some point because obviously they've neglected this one for a while. Both locations do seem to have one thing in common though and that is a lack of customers. Like I mentioned this was filmed you know, during the weekend in the middle of the afternoon and I didn't think either store would be really busy but there was hardly anybody coming in and out at all. It did really seem like Mark and I had the store to ourselves for most of the time we were here. Over here we have the clearance section and I take back what I said about it looking like Dollar General. This looks like a Dollar General clearance section. This is a mess. I don't think the other store had a clearance section except for just the Christmas stuff and it was much more well organized than this. After seeing these two very different locations, I'm really curious to know what percentage of Joanne's stores look like this and what percentage of stores look like the first one. Whatever that ratio is, is probably a good indicator of roughly how many stores they're going to close, because I imagine they're going to prioritize closing locations that are run down like this one. Here's a cart full of random crap. That's a brilliant bit of merchandising right there. The store would probably feel a lot less cramped if there wasn't just junk laying all over the place. There were several just random stacks of boxes, and this one is fantastic because it's right in front of the emergency exit. This place is really starting to remind me of Dollar General. This location didn't seem to have as much of the Yaya Han stuff around either. I think there was just this one display. And even this stuff's on sale. Joanne's stores have a lot of things to compete with. There's obviously the internet and Amazon. There's also Hobby Lobby stores, which seem to be popping up all over the place. And then there's things like Target and Walmart. This particular location shares a strip mall with a Target, and Target doesn't carry everything obviously that's in this store, but they carry a lot of it, and that Target's much more inviting than this place. If Joanne Stores wants to stay competitive, they really need to invest in fixing up their stores. This one feels like a time warp, but not in a good way. I don't know if it's possible for a actual store to be depressed, but th this one felt like it was. Hopefully this isn't what a majority of Joanne stores look like. If you're someone who happens to regularly shop at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, I'd love to know down in the comments below if this is what their stores normally look like. It's weird that this store feels so crammed, but there's also a lot of empty shelves. Maybe if they just took some of these empty shelves out and kind of spread everything out more, it wouldn't feel so awful in here. Do you see what I mean though? Doesn't that look like 1989 right there? Do you think Joanne Fabrics and Crafts has a chance of turning things around? Let me know down in the comments below. For now though, we will be seeing more Joanne stores that look like this, empty and closed down. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.